Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Tutorial Test Prep. Today we'll be going over lesson number 16 on how to use Desmos for the digital SAT math. Percents! Let's get started. Okay, so quick disclaimer everybody. There's not going to be a whole lot of Desmos in this video. I just felt that I couldn't not make a video on percents. So most of this is going to be stuff that you could do just on any old calculator, but I'm going to show you how to type it into Desmos just because I feel it's important and you might find it more convenient than using your physical calculator. So first thing we're going to talk about is percent of. So when you see a percent of, what you do is you divide the percent by 100 and then you change the of to multiplication. So watch what I do. I'm going to do 35% of 80. So I'm going to do 35 divided by 100. That's 0.35. And then I change the of to multiplication. So times 80. Now I'm going to come over here and do 0 0.35 times 80. And I get 28. So notice you could do that all in one go. You could do 35 divided by about 100 times 80 and get 28. Or what you could do is you could type in 35 and then if you put a percent symbol on your keyboard, see how it puts the word of and then I could type 80 and it would also give me 28. Now, I am going ahead and I am deleting that right now because you're going to find questions on the SAT that are, we're going to do one in a minute, or part of one in a minute, that are symbolic in nature, in which case you need to find an equation or write an equation. And just typing it into Desmos might not be that helpful. So you really need to understand the mechanics of dividing the percent by 100 and then changing the of to times. So I really encourage you not to use that last way I just said. Either rewrite it like I did here or do it all in one go using a fraction so that you remember that you need to divide by 100. And notice how I'm not doing any of this in my head. I don't want to make a careless mistake on the heat of the moment counting the decimal places. I am just doing this straight on Desmos. Okay, great. So let's do the next one. So now we're going to do 172% of 64. Okay, so I'm going to do um, 172, divide the percent by 100, and then change the of to times. And I get 110.08. And this last one is like a piece to like a larger word problem, which we're not going to do for the interest of time. But see how it says the length, which we could call L, is, that tells us, equals, and then 45% of the width. And we could call the width W. So we could now write an equation that represents this situation. So L equals 45% of the width. Okay, let's see. 45 divided by 100. That's 0.45. Change the of to multiplication times W. And when we have um, a number multiplied by a letter, we don't need to put the symbol. We can just write them next to each other. So I can write L equals 0.45 W. And then perhaps I would go and use this equation to solve the rest of the problem. So as you can see, knowing how to, even though there's that nice percent of function in Desmos, knowing how to do this kind of the old fashioned way is probably still going to be important on the test at one point or another. So don't let yourself get spoiled by that percent of function. Great. So that's how you do a percent of that shows up quite a bit on the test. Let's keep going. Second thing we're going to talk about, oh my God, one of the most important things on the test, percent multipliers. So even though we're not really going to use Desmos to do it, I just feel it's so important to make a short video talking about this. So um, to do a percent increase, um, you do 1 plus the percent divided by 100. That tells you you're a multiplier. For a percent decrease, 
you do one minus the percent divided by 100. Um, some keywords that tell you you got an increased problem, increase, greater, more. Some keywords that tell you you got a decreased problem, decrease, fewer, less. And then some real life context, one, a real life context for an increase is tax and tip, like when you tip the waiter at a restaurant. And a percent decrease context that's often on the, tent, the test is a discount. And you'll often see the words, for example, 40% off, two Fs, not of, 40% off. That's different from 40% of. So don't let that confuse you. There's two Fs. That's why I underline that. And um, lots of these problems can be solved using this kind of um, original times percent multipliers equals the final. So we'll, we'll do a problem like that at the end. I'll make a longer video on percents where I'll, where I'll elaborate on this more at a later date. But for now, this is the gist of what you need to know. Um, so you see these four problems here. We're going to do those on the calculator just to calculate the multiplier. Then we'll do a problem where we actually apply it. So increase by 27%. Okay, 1 plus percent divided by 100. So 1 plus 27 divided by 100. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by whatever original amount by 1.27. Great. Now let's do decrease by 14%. So that's 1 minus percent divided by 100. 1 minus 14 divided by 100. Okay, so in this problem, I'm going to multiply by 0 0.86, and that could be in my answer or help me get, get to the answer. Increase by 2 10%. These are really hard to do in your head as the numbers get bigger, get really big and really small. So notice how I'm not going to do it in my head. I'm just going to use Desmos. 1 plus percent divided by 100 because it's an increase. 210 divided by 100. And I'm going to multiply by 3.1. That's my multiplier. And then an increase of 0 0.8. So 1 plus 0 0.8 divided by 100. And I get, I'm going to multiply by 1.008. This is one of the most commonly, this is a very frequently tested skill. You've got to make sure you know how to do this. See how nice, as long as I know how to get to it, Desmos makes it nice and clean and easy to see what the multiplier is. Great. Okay, so let's do this problem here. We're going to actually use this guy, original times percent multipliers equals final. So Susie went to buy a dress with a sticker price of $55. Okay, so my original price is $55. And it says, I'm going to start with that. And she used a 30% off coupon. So remember we said 30% off, that's a decrease. So that's going to be our first percent multiplier. So I'm going to do 1 minus, because it's a decrease, 30 divided by 100. And I get 0.7. So we're going to do times 0 0.7. And that is the coupon and then if I have more percent multipliers you just keep going so we're going to do another one for the eight percent sales tax sales tax remember we said is an increase so for that one we're going to do one plus eight divided by a hundred and I get 1.08 so I'm going to put that here and that's my sales tax. So let me write that tax. And then how much did Susie pay at the register? So that's the final price, which is what we want to know. So you could put a letter there. You could just write final price, whatever. And now I'm going to go to a new line and I'm going to do 55 times 0 0.7 times 1.08. And I get a final price of 41.58. These problems can get more complicated, but that's the basic idea. And I just really want to showcase how to type in the percent multiplier using Desmos. Even though you can't do it on any calculator, you'll probably find it convenient 
to have it here on screen off to the side while you're solving the problem. Great, let's keep going. So another fairly common thing that they have you do, and this gives students such a hard time, is they want you to figure out the percent increase or decrease from the percent multiplier. So they give you the percent multiplier, like 1.6, and you have to figure out that that's a 60% increase. So what you do is you subtract 1, you find the, different, the distance from 1, and then you multiply by 100. Subtract 1, multiply by 100. So um, I kind of sum this up for you in this nice little informal formula. Probably not that helpful to memorize it. You probably just want to understand the process of subtracting 1, multiply by 100. Um, so let's do a problem. So, okay, so it says the expression 0.6y represents the result of decreasing the quantity y by p percent. What is the value of p? Okay, so this 0.6, that's a percent multiplier. So we want to find the percent change. So we're going to do 100 times the percent multiplier, 0.6. minus one. And we get a percent change of negative 40%. And when you have a positive percent change, that's an increase. And when you have a negative percent change, that's a decrease. So notice how I'm not going to write it with the negative sign. I just kind of account for the negative sign by writing the word decrease. So it would be a 40% decrease. So that's what you do. And again, of course, even if you um, forgot the formula, as long as you remembered that, oh, okay, I just have to subtract one and then, and then multiply it times 100, you can still kind of figure it out. We're kind of doing what we were doing before, but in reverse. Great, let's do the next one. So uh, this is an exponential function, and I'm not going to get into this, but um, when you see exponential functions problems, often the growth slash decay factor, the base of the exponent, um, is a percent multiplier, and the SAT wants you to interpret it as such. So we're not going to get into it too much, but this guy is a percent multiplier. Just take my word for it for now. And we can do a very similar process, 100 times the percent multiplier minus 1. So I'm going to do 100 times 1.15 minus 1. And I get a percent change of positive 15%. And when we have a positive percent change, we just call that an increase. So maybe in the answer choices, when it asks you to interpret it, one of the answer choices, one or two of the answer choices will say there's a 15% increase, and that will help you narrow it down to get the right answer. So please, please, please <coughs> make sure you quite literally <laughs> know your percent multipliers forwards and backwards. So you know how to get it when they tell you the percent change, and then you know how to get it when they the percent change when they give you the percent multiplier. So you got to know how to literally do it forwards and backwards. Great. And last but not least, um, the percent change formula. So um, this is how you find the percent change when they give you the original and the final value. So they don't give you any multipliers or anything like that. So the formula is new minus old divided by old times 100. And there's this really kind of neat way that I just learned to remember it. Um, no, like, oh no. You see how there's an N and then a bunch of O's? No, N-O-O -O times 100. So that might help. A little silly, but sometimes that helps us remember, right? 
Okay, so these are not SAT questions. Again, I'm just I'm just trying to illustrate the concept. The wording will be more confusing on the actual SAT, but this is the basic idea. So um, the thing you start with is the old, and the thing you end up with is the new. So we're going to do percent change. New minus old divided by old. So 92 minus 45 over 45 times 100. And here's how you type that in. So first, before I do anything, I'm going to press the slash on my keyboard to do a division sign. That will make it so that the 92 minus 45 um, stays in the numerator. Now I'm going to press down or tab, and I type in the 45, and then I press tab again, and I'm going to put times 100. So really, really quick way to figure that out, to type that in. Again, you have to know the equation, but still, it's really helpful to kind of have that visual to your left so that you can see what you're typing and look at the question at the same time. Um, so having the calculator on screen is really handy. Great. Okay, let's do the next one. So, um, and, oh, we get 140, we get positive. So, you know, that's 104.4. Uh, once again, a percent increase. Got to specify that. Okay, so now this next one, okay, 83 is the old, 76 is the new, and we're going to do percent change equals new minus old, 76 minus 83 over 83 times 100. And again, I'm going to do something very similar, so slash. 76 minus 83 divided by 83 times 100. And I get negative 8.43, about percent. And that's a negative. So we're going to call that, we're going to get rid of the negative and then just make sure we specify percent decrease. Let's just make sure we specify that there. Awesome. So there, there's definitely some equations and concepts you have to know to do these. You can't just do everything on Desmos. But as you can see, it can certainly make your life a lot easier. So I felt this was worth talking about. And I really hope you guys found this helpful. Definitely it's helpful for me when I do the test, just having the question and then my nice, neat, you know, do some work on my scratch paper and then my nice, neat typing in my final answer on Desmos just off to the side so I can make sure I'm looking at the question and then looking at Desmos to make sure I'm putting the numbers in the right places. Really helpful. Okay, that completes the lesson. Please like and subscribe for more digital SAT math content. If you're interested in my tutoring services, the link to my website will be in the description. I tutor all sections of the SAT and all math subjects from about seventh grade to AP slash early college level. Thanks for stopping by and good luck studying.